Good morning. It's Monday morning and it's pause with Elizabeth Eleanor. And today is um, the day after Mother's Day. So happy Mother's Day to everyone that celebrated yesterday. I spent time with my kids and my mum and my family. And um, it was a beautiful day. I also went camping and went and saw Meteor in um, early hours of yesterday morning. Uh, there was a meteor shower that I went out our bush and um, and enjoyed nature and being next to a river and all those wonderful things. And so today I um, was reflecting what is it I'm going to speak about this morning because um, I always move into my intuition about what is the most appropriate topic for the day and this morning <clears throat> it came up about grief because I had um, I have two friends that I saw on Facebook that are uh, grieving the loss of their sons and grief is a really interesting topic because Grief can be very subtle and uh, I know I personally have had my layers of grief. My dad passed away when I was 15 years old and he was my complete world. So uh, he was um, everything to me. He, he was like my um, stay at home mum <clears throat> and um, my, my, he was sick on a kidney machine and my mum had to work to support the family. So when he passed, uh, it was sort of sudden. I I um, I did I was aware that he was going to um, just intuitively. However, it was a sudden thing. We weren't expecting it, and it was a huge whirlwind. Right, you go into shock when something major like that happens. When a loved one um, leaves the planet um, suddenly, or even not suddenly, you know, and. Grief has so many different layers to it and we often think of grief in the context of losing a, you know, a loved one or a partner or um, family member or, or child um, and yet grief can be, um, there's so many little, little aspects to grieving and we can dismiss them and not recognize them because they can be so subtle and um, and it's, it's part of a cycle of um, life and death, right? There's this cycle that, that everything goes through from the seed growing into a plant and then as it matures, it, you know, bears fruit potentially, seeds again and that, that plant may die again, right? And so we forget those little aspects of the seed now turning into a sprout and no longer being a seed anymore. You know, the, the sprout moving into um, being able to spread its, its roots and spread its, its leaves and next thing it's, it's got um, buds on it, you know, and it's, and it's moved into that next stage. And so there's, there's actually a grieving process that happens that can be so subtle that we miss it when a child moves from being in the womb to being birthed and next thing we've we've got you know this little bundle here right and uh, a child moves from from the stages of breastfeeding into uh, you know being independent or depending on something external to us and to itself him or her um with needing a bottle or needing food out you know and when a child goes from from laying to crawling to walking and there's these different stages you know like when a child leaves home and um, goes to school for the first time and so if we're not connected to the earth and the natural um, cycles of life and 
you know, these days no one's at fault. It's actually um, the way it is. We've been so disconnected, so disconnected from um, the earth and the cycles and, and the natural um, way of being because we've been um, conditioned to separate from that. You know, time is one of those things that has moved us and separated us more and more out of our natural states of intuition and um, inner guidance into external validation and external um, regulation, you know, all of these things outside of ourselves to support us to not think for ourselves and to not be connected and grounded in the earth. And so we can be very, very disconnected to what's happening um, in our very essence, in our purity, in our sovereignty. And as we disconnect from that, we disconnect from those different um, subtle emotions and subtle levels of, of existence. And grief is one of those things. And if we miss one of those parts, if we miss an aspect of that those stages we can find that the next part of those stages can be very very challenging and convoluted and dysfunctional and i'm talking here i'm thinking about um, a couple of my clients uh, that i have been working with recently and uh, one of them is having a very um, dysfunctional codependent relationship with her um, son and another one a codependent relationship with her mother even though she's a mum and she's uh, you know living independently and she's got kids and she's got a husband uh, there's this really uh, dysfunctional relationship between her and her mum and the same with my my other client with her son where there's been a uh, piece missing in the process and the cycle of natural growth and that is where uh, there's been a change and you know with my client with the um, son moving from being a child where you are reliant on uh, you know you you've got to support and be responsible for this child and then watching this child grow and give this child more freedom and more ability to make uh, his own decisions and and then taking these little bits and, and you know moving away, moving away. So all of a sudden he is now an independent strong man and you have uh, become you know his his guide when he needs you, not all the time, you know. And so there's that stage was lost and not any fault of the mother but but this is again this or the daughter or the son right but this is again this um disconnect from the cycles of life and from the cycles of being that we um we've been conditioned to to be numb to and so because those stages of letting go, letting go, letting go and allowing this this son to bloom and grow and become a you know strong independent man, there's this attachment that is now um, entangled and through that entanglement, you know the son became quite um, mentally ill and has been in different stages and and fluctuates in and out of that and so therefore now the the mother is in this constant fear that he'll plummet again so is you know on her guard all the time is he going where is he going what's he doing you know who's he with you know is he going to fall into those old patterns again and not being able to let go and live her own life because of these you know this this codependent relationship and being able to recognize that and see and sometimes it's just naming it right naming this is what's happening and naming the feelings that are coming up and naming 
the emotions and and letting the grief happen mm. letting the opportunity for release that this is normal and natural <clears throat> uh, and being able to sit back again and pause and be in your own space again instead of jumping out into somebody else's space and constantly trying to fix the problem or fix um, and, and solve a solution that actually um, is not solvable because the very challenge is you know that the fixing in the first place is trying is seeing that there's broken and same with the other client as well with the uh, codependent relationship with the mother the mother that who has not let go and um, has actually created um, an emotional attachment where she is putting her you know gaslighting her her daughter uh, so that her daughter is constantly needing her for validation but never getting it right and so being able to let go of um, any situation as you go along seeing when it is the natural cycle to do that you know and, and bringing up your children so that they are um, becoming more independent of themselves and then uh, creating a functional relationship and I will be doing a, a pause where we talk about relationships and the different types of relationships so grief can come up when the natural cycle is not um, respected and validated and um, given its its right and its place and grief comes in all shapes and forms because if we um, what I have found in my life and what happened to me was I was unaware that I was grieving and so I went on a you know 10 year bender <laughs> um, of totally numbing uh, any emotions that I was having so that um, I didn't have to um, deal with what was going on thinking that what was going on was a weakness in some way and and uh, I can only imagine um, you know what that's like as um, a man or a male who is going through um, grief you know the different here we are in a in a world where equality is is you know supposed to be where we're heading and yet um, a totally dysfunctional um, um, mixed up mess because we've still got you know men have got to be the warriors and um, and women you know have to be the nurturers and yet um, we're also you know creating this trap of that's not the way it is and so we you know we've got this distortion and so men have got no idea who they're supposed to be and the same with women um, and and it's causing you know chaos in the world in my opinion and um, and through that process you know men are bottling up bottling up but bottling up even more and so are women because you know we've got to toughen up and be strong instead of allowing that um, energy out of our body and, and the sorrow and the vulnerability and the grief out of our body because when you allow that and just express it when it's coming and it's happening you're allowing that out of your cells you're giving your body that that breath out you know and uh, so that you can then take a really healthy breath in and that's um, from an energetic point of view right so I remember a, a lady coming to me years and years ago about uh, her husband had she'd been married for 35 years if I remember correctly and her husband had just um, cheated on her and, and left her for a younger um, woman and she came to me to have some healing and she said you know I'm devastated and she was just a mess and she was wanting me to get rid of the grief and I said to her I won't and I can't and it's and it shouldn't be that way grief is a natural part of our um, process and I said we can work on your confidence 
However, allow your body to grieve, grieve and allow um, the different stages to come through and then look at where those stages are and what they're from, right? Because grieving is an opportunity to look at what are my own thought patterns about what's happening and where the, you know, this death cycle and I say death um, or you know, in a in a the context of that part leaving, because at a higher level there is no death, in my opinion. I believe that uh, when we, you know, we we change form and that we go back into <clears throat> there's you know there's different stages, and and I've got my own theories and. Uh, let me know if you'd like me to talk about that and what uh, what my beliefs are of, of life after death. Uh, if you're interested, put that in the comments and um, and we can talk about that as a another episode. Because when something the you know the the change of uh, existence from a seed into sprouting into a sapling. there is a natural letting go of particles of some form, right? <clears throat> and grief can be because there's a distortion in our own view, our own thoughts and our own emotions around that. So we have the opportunity to look at where is this grief coming from? You know, there's a, there's a longing or a sorrow and there's a letting go. However, is some of it, you know, magnified because of my own beliefs about myself, uh, my own, you know, connections that have been maybe uh, a little bit out of um, out of my own personal dysfunction and need to be validated and loved outside of myself and need to be um, accepted need to be you know um, belong all of those things if if you're coming from that place then this is an opportunity for your own reflection and uh, opportunity to grieve those parts of yourself so letting go of what the external grief is of of what is happening uh, you know externally to you but looking at what is happening internally with my grieving cycle what is happening what is my need to be validated or to be accepted or um need for this connection outside of myself and you know hey no judgment here i'm talking from i've had my own processes of grief and and you know for my children i'm i am absolutely honored and blessed that <clears throat> i still have two um live children um i did have three births but i still have two live children and they're doing quite well however i remember for myself having no issues with you know them going to school and and you know turning into into teenagers and all the different stages that that can happen However, I remember when um, <clears throat> when my daughter um, said she was getting married, right? She was, she was uh, with this beautiful man and he proposed to her and she um, went and got married and it was really beautiful. And I had this, this moment, it took, it took a little while, but I had this moment where um, I was asked if I wanted to go to a women's circle and I was thinking about, you know, Carly coming. And it brought up something for me like, oh my gosh, you know, like Carly's not going to be able to hang out with me as much and Carly's not going to be able to, um, you know, come to these circles. And, and all of a sudden I just felt this this stress, you know. And so I rang her up and, and started crying that, um, you know, that there was a part of our relationship that had gone. And in that conversation I recognised ah this is me grieving or letting go because now there's somebody else that's going to um be her partner in you know and, and you know take 
um, that that aspect of looking after her and her emotions and and supporting her and, and being her confidant you know and um, and when I recognized that that, that um, this was an opportunity for me to let go and um, and so what I did was I spoke to them about it and real recognized it and so I spoke to her husband and said you know I like to have a moment together where I physically give her to you um, because we we did it in the in the wedding however I didn't emotionally and spiritually understand the process and so in that process I we we sat and I energetically you know let go and allowed um, um, allowed the process of grief and, and, and the letting go and you know gifting him my daughter basically <clears throat> so in different stages uh, of growth and you know the letting go at, from as something grows there's got to be a letting go of something right <clears throat> in the different stages if needed um, a ceremony or a ritual or some aspect of, of that to signify that is a really healthy way of helping you know move those layers and those um, stages of growth to to happen in a healthy you know functional way uh, if it's a small change the way I myself personally do it now is just the acknowledgement just ah, I'm letting go of something so that I can bring new things in and and just naming those things is you know I've said for years and years and years I reckon 80% of any sort of healing or any sort of process is the acknowledgement of it once it's acknowledged then you can you can work with it right so letting go of and naming it in the first place and letting go of it um, is you know and and there's layers there's so many layers especially when it's a big um, grief you know like <clears throat> I mean I'm talking you could you know car accidents and next thing you're changed there's something different in your body that you now this is who you are now that you're moving forward there's there's so many different challenges and um, experiences of life right and you can see them as challenges or you can go this is my next new experience when we name them a certain way that also gives us the opportunity to open up to new things and um, and not take the burden of different definitions of words as well right grief for example can be um, uh, have some really strong and powerful vibration around that word but when you recognize grief as a, as a natural stage of a cycle it takes some of that you know gunk away from it and the same with um, change, changing something from the word challenge or problem into this is an experience I'm having it takes some of that gunk away from you know that heaviness away from the word and opens you up to a new um, opportunity for growth right so that's my take that's me today <clears throat> I hope everyone had a great weekend and for those that are um, going through you know uh, different cycles of grief at the moment and and I would like to know <clears throat> I'd love for you to put in the comments if you're watching uh, if anything hit home what what you know that you got any value from this and um, take an opportunity just to reflect on anything that you may be going through at the moment that you may not have recognized as a grieving um, and give yourself some space around it right um, do some reflecting maybe some journal work if that's that's your thing and um, yeah for those that I know that are going through some you know major stages of grief at the moment I really honor you the, the two women that I know that are in my friend circle that um, that are going through some major stuff at the moment are doing so well you know they've they've been using ritual and um, an awareness 
and um, naming these things and allowing them to, to happen in the different stages. And that's just so healthy, you know, and um, it's a process and it's a process that you cannot speed up. Um, there's different ways of, you know, it can, it can get easier. Um, however, there's different layers of grief, isn't there, right? And so I honour anyone uh, that is going through any sort of um, grieving process at the moment and, you know, really would like to send my love out to you. Take care, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your week. Take a nice deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth and just relax and be aware that also grief um, can be um, a process of, of looking back and reflecting and once we've done that in a healthy way it's really nice to then move forward who do I choose to be in this situation who do I choose to experience myself as now and move that into your current reality um, and release the old and just move into the new take care Mwah.